Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. Today's name of God. The meaning is a tricky one. So maybe massage your brain a little bit. Get ready for this one because we're going to dive into the word holy. What does it mean to be holy? Have you thought about that? How would you define holiness? We hear the word holy in church a lot, don't we? Or maybe when we think about the Ten Commandments and it talks about the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We know that God is holy. We hear that we are called to be holy. Holiness, we sing about it. But what does that mean? Holiness. Today's name for God can give us some clues can give us some clues. So in the Hebrew, holy or set apart to be holy is kadosh with a Q, kadosh. There's a little bit of a shadow there, but hopefully you can read it. And kadosh has to do with set apart as holy or when it's used as a name of God, it means the holy one, the holy one. Now, I'm going to compare holy to something a little more familiar. We just finished separating the holidays, right? The holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, pretty soon we'll hit Valentine's Day, 4th of July, maybe your birthday is a special holiday. And the word holiday really came from the word holy days. It was a special day, right? And think about Things are different on a holiday, aren't they? Now, some people have to work on holidays or maybe they take turns working, but a lot of stores close on a holiday. Maybe you'd have a special meal on a holiday. Maybe you have to dress up a little bit. Maybe there's traditions for Christmas. Maybe you have a Christmas tree and you exchange gifts for Thanksgiving. Maybe before you eat, you all go around the table and share something you're thankful for. For Valentine's Day, maybe you make cards for people at school or for, for your family members or siblings. All right. A holiday is a different day, isn't it? The 4th of July. Is it really the 4th of July if you don't have fireworks? It's part, it's become part of that holiday, hasn't it? And a holy day, when something is holy, it is special. It is set apart. It is different from everything else. It's kind of a bummer if you get sick on a holiday, isn't it? If you were sick and you didn't get to eat all of the yummy food, or maybe you had a family member who had to work and it just didn't feel the same. There's something about a holy day, a holiday that makes it special. When something is holy, it is special. It is set apart. It is different. And it isn't like anything else. Kadosh, to be set apart as holy. And when we use it as a name of God, we are saying, God, there is no one else like you. You are your own day. You are a holiday. You are holy, God. There is nothing like you. There is no other God, lowercase g, like the God, capital G. You are the creator. You are everything. You have never sinned. You are perfect. You are holy. So let's look at some Bible verses. Let's look at some passages and see about how God is referred to as Kadosh, the Holy One. He is holy. He is different. He is set apart. He is special in a way that we can't even imagine. It's hard for us to wrap our minds around it. So grab your Bibles if you don't already. And we're going to go to Psalms, all right? So how do we find Psalms? Well, the easiest way is like open your Bible to about the middle. Usually Psalms is right in the middle. It's the biggest, longest book in the Bible. So typically we can find it by just flipping to the middle 
And we're going to go to Psalms chapter 89. Psalms chapter 89. And David writes this, um, this psalm. Actually, it might be written by Ethan, it looks like. But this song is about God's loyalty. It's about God's loyalty. And we're just going to read a portion of it here. We're going to read a part of it here together. But it's all describing and setting the scene, describing God as Kadosh, the Holy One. So imagine, paint a picture in your mind of how God is getting described here. So Psalms chapter 89, big number 89. And we're going to start right at the beginning and then we're going to read through verse 18. We're not going to read the entire thing because it is a long one. But this was originally a song that would have been sung. All right, so sung in church or something. All right, so think about this. Think about how God is being described. It says, I will always sing about the Lord's love. I will tell of his loyalty from now on. I will say your love continues forever. Your faithfulness goes on and on like the sky. You said, I made an agreement with the man of my choice. I made a promise to my servant David. I told him, I will make your family continue forever. Your kingdom will continue from now on. Lord, the heavens praise you for your miracles and for your loyalty in the meeting of your holy ones. Who in heaven is equal to the Lord? No one's equal to God, are they? Continues, none of the angels is like the Lord. When the holy ones meet, it is God that they fear. He is more frightening than all who surround him. Lord God of heaven's armies, who is like you? Lord, you are powerful and completely to be trusted. You rule the mighty sea. You calm the stormy waves. You crush the sea monster. By your power, you scattered your enemies. The skies and the earth belong to you. You made the world and everything in it. You created the north and the south. Mount Tabor and Mount Hermon sing for joy at your name. Your arm has great power. Your hand is strong. Your right hand is lifted up. Your kingdom is built on what is right and fair. Bear. Love and truth are in all you do. Happy are the people who know how to praise you. Lord, let them live in the light of your presence. In your name they rejoice all the time. They praise your goodness. You are their glorious strength. In your kindness you honor your king. Our king, our shield belongs to the Lord. Our king belongs to the Holy One of Israel. Kadosh. They describe God's holiness here by comparing it to all the things that are not like God. They say, God, you created the whole world. How can anything else compare to you? You calmed the mighty seas. You made the north and the south. You made the mountains and the mountains bow in your presence. Your arms are great and strong. You are Kadosh, the holy one. Let's look at another place where it describes this. We're going to flip forward just a few ver uh, pages to the book of Isaiah. So out of Psalms, through Proverbs, through Ecclesiastes, past Song of Solomon, and we'll hit Isaiah. If you hit Jeremiah, you've gone too far. We want Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. All right, so we're going to start in verse 8. All right, so Isaiah chapter 41, and then we're going to go forward to verse 8, so little number 8, and you can pause the video if you need more time. When you're ready, Isaiah 41 verse 8. So we're building another picture of holy, kadosh, God being holy. All right, so verse 8 says, the Lord says, people of Israel, you are my servants. People of Jacob, I chose you. You are from the family of my friend Abraham. You are far away on the earth. I called you from a faraway country. I said, you are my servants. I have chosen you and I have not turned against you. So don't worry because I am with you. Don't be afraid because I am your God. I will make you strong and will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. All those people who are angry with you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who are against you will disappear and be lost. If you look for your enemies, you will not find them. 
Those who fought against you will vanish completely. I am the Lord your God. I am holding your right hand. And I tell you, don't be afraid. I will help you. You few people of Israel who are left, do not be afraid, even though you are weak as a worm. I myself will help you, says the Lord. I am the one who saves you, the Holy One of Israel, Kadosh. Look, I have made you like a threshing board. You are new with many sharp teeth and you will walk on mountains and crush them. You will make the hills like chaff. You will throw them into the air and the wind will carry them away. A windstorm will scatter them. Then you will be happy in the Lord. You will be proud of the Holy One of Israel, Kadosh. The poor and needy people look for water, but they can't find any. Their tongues are dry with thirst, but I, the Lord, will answer the prayers. I, the God of Israel, will not leave them to die. I will make rivers flow on the dry hills. I will make springs of water flow through the valleys. I will change the desert into a lake of water. I will change the dry land into springs of water. I will make trees grow in the desert. There will be cedars, acacia, myrtle, and olive trees. I will put pine, fir, and cypress trees growing together in the desert. People will see these things and understand. Together they will think carefully about these things. They will know that the Lord's power did this. They will know that the Holy One of Israel made these things. All throughout this passage, what is God saying? I'm the, the Holy One. I'm the strong one. I'm the one who's going to do it. I'm going to save you. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to help you. He's talking about people who are afraid, people who are angry, people who are poor, people who are thirsty. And God just keeps saying over and over, I am the Holy One. I am going to take care of you. Just hold on to my hand. It's going to be okay. One last passage to look at. Very end of the Bible, very end of the Bible, Revelation, Revelation chapter 4. So it's the last book in the Bible, last book, and we're going to read this little vision that John has, where he gets a picture into the throne room of heaven. So Revelation chapter 4, and we're just going to read verses 1 through 8 together. All right, so this is a vision that John has, he's seen into heaven. It says, after this I looked, and there before me was an open door in heaven. And I heard the same voice that spoke to me before. It was the voice that sounded like a trumpet. The voice said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. Then the spirit took control of me and there before me was the throne of heaven. All right, so picture this in your mind. Picture the throne room of heaven. Someone was sitting on the throne. The one who sat on the throne looked like precious stones, like jewels of jasper and carnelian. All around the throne was a rainbow, the color of an emerald. And around the throne were 24 other thrones. And there were 24 elders sitting on the 24 thrones. The elders were dressed in white and they had golden crowns on their head. Lightning flashes and noises of thunder came from the throne. And before the throne, there were seven lamps burning. These lamps are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was something that looked like a sea of glass and it was clear like crystal. Around the throne on each side, there were four living things and these living things had eyes all over them in front and in back. The first living thing was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third had a face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of these four living things had six wings. The living things were covered all over with eyes, inside and out, day and night. They never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one who is and was and is to come. Kadosh, holy is God. Now, this could be kind of freaky, especially when we get to that part about creatures with eyes all over it, right? But this is John just trying to describe what he saw and trying to put it into words for us to have an idea. And so we don't need to be afraid of that. But the one thing that I just think about is, imagine how special that throne room of God is. So special that day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You know, 
God is pure, he is perfect, he is holy, but he shows us all throughout the Bible that he is holy and when we take hands with him, when we hold on to his right hand, his strong, powerful arm, he helps us to be holy too. He helps us to be holy. Kadosh means set apart, special, like a holiday is special and set apart. There is no one like God. There is no one like him. He is holy. He is in control. All of creation sings his praises. And so just like God is holy, he says, hey, I want to make you holy. I want you to be set apart, to be special, to have my spirit and my love inside of you. I want to hold on to your hand. I'm going to help you. I'm going to do all the work. Jesus saved us already when he died for us on the cross. Now we get to live that out. We get to walk that out and be righteous and perfect and holy, just like he is the holy one, the holiest of holy. Holiness is a hard word. It's so hard, but we can sit and imagine and think in wonder and awe at a God who is amazing and holy, and we can praise him for that. Let's say a prayer, and then I'll show you our matching cards that we can make today. Dear God, you are holy. It's hard for us to understand, but we know that you are set apart. You are perfect. You are pure. There is no one like you. But yet you love us so much that you want to hold on to our hands. You want to help us navigate life here on earth. And someday we're going to be able to see you in that throne room. And we're going to get to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We thank you for making us holy because you are the holy one. In your name, amen. All right, if you're making the matching game with me, our one card has Kadosh on it. It has our Hebrew word, and then down below it says Kadosh is the Hebrew word for holy because we call God the Holy One because he set apart from everything. He is perfect. He is holy. And then on our other card, we have what it means, the Holy One. And then pick a Bible verse from what we explored today. Pick a Bible verse. I picked the one that we read together in Isaiah where it says, For I am the Lord your God who holds your right hand, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. For your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. So you could write whatever Bible verse you wanted to on here that you like to remind you that God is the Holy One, Kadosh. And then how do we know when we've got a match? Well, on the back of this one, we went with yellow squiggles, but you could decorate it however you want. You just want them to be the same. You want them to be the same so you know when you've got a match. All right, and all of this information plus the Bible verses are in the video description below. So you can make these and have a whole matching game by the time we're done with this series of all of the names of God and what they mean for us. All right, so have a wonderful rest of your day remembering that God is Kadosh, holy. And think about today, what does that name teach you about God? I will see you tomorrow.